Welcome back. Uh, we're going to uh, check in with uh, Jason Church here after the uh, top of the hour. He's got a story that that you've got to hear. We're, we'll, it's just uh, unbelievable what people are willing to do in the name of fashion, Jason. Can I just tell you that? Fortunately, that has never afflicted me, as my wife will testify. So, uh, lots going on. Uh, the the, the um, Missouri House and Senate are nearing the end of their session. They're only about two weeks uh, from the end of it at this point. We're joined right now by uh, St. Louis County Senator Andrew Koenig. Andrew, how are you, my friend? Doing good. Thanks for having me on. Well, thanks for giving us some time. I know you got to get in there for a vote coming up at the uh, top of the hour on the budget. Um, it, it, w- I wanted to talk to you about a couple of things, but first of all, this circuit breaker bill. What can you tell the listeners about that bill, what it would do, and kind of where it stands? So uh, it's the circuit breaker. There's two portions. Um, what it is, it's a, it's a tax credit, and it allows people – um, I, I think the original and uh, what I think it should be used for is to help keep seniors in their homes when property taxes start rising. But um, the portion that we're trying to cut is dealing with renters. When you have people living in motels getting a property tax credit when they're not really paying the, ta- the taxes, you have people um, that are receiving this tax credit on that are on Medicaid. So Medicaid's flipping the entire bill for them for their living expenses. Yet they're getting a property tax credit to cover the property taxes. Wow! Do not pay. So that's been around for a long time. It has. Why has it never been addressed? I mean, it's got to be a huge waste of money. Yeah, it's, uh, the part you know the total program is uh, over a hundred million, and the port portion that we're trying to cut is about fifty-two million, and uh, you know it free things up in the budget. But that money would also go back into services for needy seniors correct that is correct yeah we're uh we're putting that money in um there's a point system um dealing with uh people that are getting in-home care um you know people with disabilities and that's where the money would be going to okay well good is that part of the compromise that was discussed um there yeah there is a compromise although it's it's not a done deal yet we debated that bill until about 6 a.m last week (sighs) And we're still trying to work out a compromise, and I'm not sure if we have one yet. Yeah. Okay. Well, uh, keep keep us up to date on that because I, I I that would be a a step forward if you can eliminate a loophole like that where that kind of, that much money is draining out of the the state coffers. That's for sure. Um, I saw you put out something on social media earlier about the this Blaine amendment, and we talked about it last week. I had on. Um, uh, the the lady who actually runs Trinity Lutheran School, which has been at the heart of this lawsuit that went before the Supreme Court, um, what, what what are your thoughts on that amendment? Yeah, I'm I'm totally against the Blaine Amendment. I believe it violates our First Amendment, the free exercise of. Also, you can make an argument it violates our Fourteenth Amendment um, with the equal protection under the law. Um, basically, what it does is it says if it, you know if you're a really religious organization, we're going to discriminate against you and not allow you to have um, any grants or not even apply for any grants. We're just going to deny you. And so I think that I think that's a violation of our U.S. Constitution. Now, so so we're talking to Senator Andrew Koenig. What would have to happen to remove an amendment? Would that take a statewide vote? I'm guessing. Well, uh, yeah. If you want to change the constitution, but if if our if our judicial system strikes it down, um, it could theoretically be removed that way. So we'll see. I mean, is it? But but is that kind of what we're banking on? Or are you thinking it would I take? I think so. I, I think um, I think the U.S. Supreme Court um, will strike down our Blaine Amendment. Interesting. Yeah, but we could have a decision on that. I guess b- before June, so that could be coming up. Right. Uh, pretty quickly. What about the budget? I know you're going in for a vote today. Where do things stand on that? Well, there's, you know, the House um, fully funded the foundation formula. Um, there, you know, there, the question is, is, is there really the money there to do that? Um, right now we're on Budget Bill 2 dealing with the educate, uh, which is the education, which we haven't finalized that. When we go back in, we're going to be dealing with that. There's a couple of amendments pending dealing with that issue. Um, we'll probably be going to conference next week, and hopefully we can get it done next week. Are there things that are on the bubble, uh, big big bills that may not get done before the end of the session? There's yeah, there's a bunch there's a bunch of them out there. You know, the reason why I was really 
cued into um, this U.S. Supreme Court case dealing with Trinity Lutherans because I have an educational savings account bill. It's funded through a, a tax credit scholarship program. Um, it might be better to do it through a direct appropriations, um, which we could only do if our Blaine Amendment gets striked struck down. Okay. Yeah, I, I think, you know, when dealing with public education, if public money is going to educate um, a child, that is public education. It's not necessarily an institution. And we're falling behind national or uh, globally um, with some of our peers because we have an education system that kind of refuses to reform itself. It kind of limits options, in other words, right? That's right. It limits options, and you get no innovation. So would that would that bill allow that money to be portable then? Exactly. That money would uh, allow it to be portable um, for kids with disabilities um, and also uh, kids that are in the foster care system. And, you know, a direct appropriation might be a better way than a tax credit scholarship program, but we have to go the tax credit scholarship way um, because we have Missouri's Blaine Amendment. Very good. Well, I'll tell you what, um, Senator Andrew Koenig from the 15th District, I, I know you got to get in there for a vote, but I appreciate your time, and keep us up to date on these bills. Thank you. All right, appreciate that. Thank you. Good to get him on there. Uh, sort of get you an update on what's going on in Jeff City. They are kind of down to crunch time, and he's got a vote in the Senate chambers in about eight minutes. So we need to cut him uh, loose to go do that. Let me get to uh, Hasha McQueen, who's been holding here for a while now. And uh, Hasha, how are you? I'm doing fine, Mark. I, I, I love it when you when you call in. And I know you, you comment sometimes if we're talking about immigration issues, since that's sort of <laughs> right. uh, the area of your, of your legal expertise. But right now, you're you want to give us an update on this this case that's pending. Just to just to remind people, uh, you had your frozen embryos, and and there was a, a court case that went against you, um, d- d- claiming that these were property as opposed to people. Right. Yeah. Right. And um, so my case right now, we are getting ready to a, a petition the U.S. Supreme Court. We're actually asking for an extension of time so that we can um, better prepare a petition. So what, so that's in the works right now. Uh, the May 1st deadline is coming up, though, so we're hoping we hear something pretty soon. And on the House Bill 112, which is the Frozen Embryo Custody Bill, it has actually moved out of the Rules Committee. It moved out on Monday. Uh, everything has moved pretty quickly since the last time I talked to you on this bill, and it's on its way to the House floor for a vote. We don't know when that's going to be, but um, but it, it's on its way. So I'm, I'm excited about that. And uh, I know it's down to crunch time, and whether or not we can get it passed is one thing um, passed completely. I, I'm pretty confident we can get it passed to the House. But uh, the trick will be finding a Senate bill to amend it to. I think that's the only hope we have, really, of passing it. Koenig, a Senator Koenig, actually was just on. He um, had the companion bill to this embryo bill, which is uh, Senate Bill 432. Uh And it actually did not go anywhere in the Senate. Uh Last year, we actually had a committee hearing on it. And um, I talked to Senator Koenig about it, and he he was pretty disappointed, you know, because I'll tell you what, Senator Koenig is amazing, and he understands the importance of what's going on with this. So, he, he does, yeah. He's, he's been a strong conservative voice down there, uh, that's for sure. Um, so even if the House passes it, then you've got, you would have to attach it as an amendment to a Senate bill to get it through in time, you think? Yeah, yeah, yeah I think that would be our, the only way we would be able to get it through. But, um, you know, I mean, I'm hopeful. It, things have happened in the last moments, you and, know, so I'm not... And just to explain very quickly to the listeners what that bill would do then. Uh, the, the House Bill 112 is basically saying if a case like this comes in front of the judge, then the judge will err on the side of giving the frozen embryos to the parent who wants them to grow and develop, and the other party would be able to walk away and cut off parental ties. Oh. That's what this bill does. Okay. Well, that, that seems pretty straightforward. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think so. I, I, Even though opposition's calling it a personhood bill, they're calling it everything in the uh, oh, everything yeah. they can try to get it not passed. But really, it's it's very, very cut and dry, and it's only for those that come in front of the judge, which I think the state of Missouri has an interest in seeing its citizens or potential citizens, residents, you know, grow and develop and, and become sure, voting sure. members. Well, <laughs> Hasha, I, I got to run, but thank you so much for the update, and uh, keep keep us up to date on that in the future, would you? Thank you so much. All right. Thank you so much. Yeah, I appreciate that. Uh, got to run. When we come back, uh, we are going to uh, – well, we'll have the latest on our, our Twitter poll. There's still time to vote at Tony Colombo 971, at Mark Cox 971. What grade do you give the president 
on his 100 days. We'll get to your phone calls to this Jason Church issue on clothing when we come back. This hour of the Mark Cox Show brought to you by Thomas Helbig, the official St. Louis financial advisor of the Mark Cox Show. Well, Michael's Flooring Outlet has, first of all, They've got the greatest selection of flooring that you can imagine. Just about anything from, you know, your 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 typical uh, builder's grade of flooring that you might find in a bathroom that you just roll out, uh, all the way up to hardwoods, uh, great carpeting selections. There's some laminates out there these days that you, that, that you can actually grout. I mean, it looks like tile. It's not tile. You can grout it. It's amazing. Uh, we went with a wood look for our bathroom floor. It's completely waterproof. Uh, we never have to worry about any problems with uh, with water getting seeping down into that laminate it's just fantastic it's what michael prides himself on that his employees will educate you they'll ask you questions that others might not and they'll help you find the perfect match instead of selling what they have in overstock check out their four locations two in st charles county one in west county one in north county or go to their website michaelsflooringoutlet.com Brian Kilmeade here for Smile Advantage, a membership-based dental savings plan that's simple and affordable. This plan is perfect for seniors and employees without dental benefits. Why pay a third party for your dental care? Take back control of your oral health and keep costs down by turning to Smile Advantage and do it with a provider. There are many offices throughout St. Louis now offering these membership plans. Your clinics, exams, x-rays included, and you'll receive discounts on additional treatment. It's clear, concise, and affordable. Ask your current dental office if they offer Smile Advantage or find an office that does at MySmileAdvantage.com. You're seeing it on social media? Real estate agents are yelling it from practically every rooftop. And it's true. Buyers can't find homes. And if you're a seller, that's great news for you. Home inventory right now is extremely low. I'm Christina Strait, and I'm the owner of Strait Realty. And I'll get your home listed on the MLS for only 4%. Listing for 4% doesn't make you cheap. It just makes you smart. Why pay more than 4? Call 314-441-4444. 441 4444. Napa know-how. Why buy the dual cam sports action and dash camera from Napa for $69.99? Because it's the only dash cam that's also an everything else cam. So you can record yourself being safe on the road or attach it to your helmet for dirt biking off-road. Because like this camera, you're a double threat. The dual cam sports action and dash camera for only $69.99. That's Napa know-how. Napa know-how. At participating Napa Auto Parts stores. Offer expires 4 30 17 Allergies, pollen in the air, dogs in the house, mold in the basement. Whatever triggers your allergy symptoms, it can really hold you back. Break through with Allegra 5-in-1 Relief. Allegra works fast, won't make you drowsy, provides 24-hour multi-symptom relief, and it's effective every day. Break through allergies with Allegra. Starts working in one hour. Use only as directed. Guaranteed or your money back. Visit Allegra.com. KFTK FM, Florissant. KFTK AM, East St. Louis. K254CR, St. Louis. The Mark Cox Show. Brought to you by Thomas Helbig, the official St. Louis financial advisor of The Mark Cox Show. Find everything Mark Cox at 971talk.com slash Cox. FM News Talk, 971. News Radio, I'm Lisa Brady. The White House denies stonewalling a request for documents about the hiring of National Security Advisor Michael Flynn, who was ultimately fired and who is now accused of failing to disclose payments from Russia when he filed papers to renew his security clearance in January of last year. The documents in question, uh, the Department of Defense possessed and sent over to him. Uh, the documents that occurred before he worked here would be up to him to turn over. White House spokesman Sean Spicer also declining to weigh in on the specifics of the new allegation, noting it was long before the election or Flynn's involvement with the administration. House Oversight Committee Chairman Jason Chaffetz revealing the new information, along with ranking Democrat Elijah Cummings after reviewing classified documents. Based on these documents, I believe the, the Oversight Committee should be holding a hearing with General Flynn. Cummings says knowingly falsifying or concealing a material fact is a felony. The U.S. Commerce Secretary says trade disputes with Canada over milk and lumber 
are an example of problems with the North American Free Trade Agreement. If NAFTA were functioning properly, you wouldn't be having these kinds of very prickly, very unfortunate developments back to back. Secretary Wilbur Ross also saying moments ago it makes a case for renegotiating NAFTA sooner rather than later and that the administration hopes Congress will approve fast track trade promotion soon. But he denies that airing the issues with Canada is any part of a PR push for that. A unanimous recommendation to extend Oklahoma's moratorium on capital punishment. The commission reviewing the state's use of the death penalty just out with its final report, concluding that reforms are still needed to address the volume and seriousness of flaws in the system. Executions have been on hold in Oklahoma for more than two years after a string of botched lethal injections. The state is working on new protocols. Fox News Radio fair and balanced. Blue the dog here for propane. Making the rounds with my owner, the propane man, has allowed me to see a lot. I may just be a simple dog. I didn't attend the elite boarding kennels, and you'll never see me on Barking with the Stars. But I do know that propane is the smart fuel that lets millions of Americans live where they want and how they want. It's clean, reliable, and powers modern appliances from tankless water heaters to high-efficiency furnaces. Learn more at ProudlyPropane.com. Five times more hires are made through Indeed.com than any other job site, according to independent research. Imagine a lottery that had five times more winners or a Sunday with five times more touchdowns. When you're hiring, it makes five times more sense to use Indeed. Right now, we're giving new users a $50 credit to post a sponsored job on the world's number one job site. Claim your $50 credit at Indeed.com slash credit. Terms, conditions, and quality standards apply. 971 News Time 203. Good afternoon. I'm Jason Church. Uber, Lyft, and any other ride sharing service can now operate anywhere in Missouri. Governor Eric Greitens signed House Bill 13 at St. Charles Community College yesterday. Uber sent out notices letting people know that they were operating in St. Charles effective immediately. To use it, you have to download the Uber smartphone app, create an account, and